Well, glory to God. Welcome once again to Power of Faith. I'm Pastor Philip Durber with your family of Faith Victory Church right here in the capital city of Frankfort, Kentucky. And just delighted to be able to share with you the truths of God's word once again. Luke 137 says, for with God, nothing is impossible. And I just want to welcome you to another special edition of Power and Faith. We have in our studio, Debbie and Mike Guru. Mike, God bless you. Welcome. Bless you, sir. Debbie, welcome. Thank you. Hallelujah. You know, I was thinking. Good to be here. Yeah, we're going to have us time. Yes, we are. Uh, the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, right? That's right. right. And we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. That's right. And uh, the psalmist says, make known his deeds among the people. Mm. You know, we're not supposed to keep this to ourselves. Right. I was thinking today, uh, when did we meet? About 10 years ago. Where was it? It was at our church okay. when you came down for Bobby Jean. Ah. She was doing the meetings Remember? there. Okay. And you came down, did the worship, and uh, stayed that weekend. I believe it was over the weekend. And, okay. Uh, yeah. So All right. Time. All right. Wonderful. Well, it's been a wonderful uh, relationship ever since. It has. And uh, I'm excited about uh, what God has done in your lives and what he's doing. Amen. And where he's about to take you. So right. we want to get to the has has done. All right. Right. <laughs> Debbie, we're going to start with you, ladies first. Okay. You look lovely. Thank you. All right. Debbie, how, how what, what kind of family were you raised in? Um, to look from the outside, it looked like it was a perfect family. Mm -hmm. My father was 60 and my mother was 21 when they got married. Oh, wow. Yeah. So there was a large age difference. But uh, when I came along, it didn't matter. Everything was fine. Everything was wonderful. Mm -hmm. My father was uh, very wealthy. He created the sand and gravel plant in San Diego, California, mm -hmm. with a truck and a, a dump truck and a shovel. Wow. And it's become a billion dollar business today and has uh, cemented most of San Diego or asphalted San Diego and made mm -hmm. the freeways and so forth mm -hmm. today. But as I was growing up, um, I wanted for nothing. Everything was handed to me on a silver platter. Did you have brothers and sisters? I had a brother, older mm -hmm. brother. Mm -hmm. He's two years older, and I have a half-sister. Okay. And um, the family life was just, it was just normal. Uh, it seemed normal until uh, things started happening within the home. And as a child, I didn't know how to deal with it. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what was happening, what was being said uh, behind closed doors. Um, I don't know how far you want me to go with this were right now. Parents, were your parents fighting and carrying on? No, no. Peaceful, very peaceful mm -hmm. in the home. Mm -hmm. uh, Daddy would give me uh, piggyback rides to bed, uh, tell me a bedtime story, uh, you know, just the normal. Uh, and my mother is very uh, loving, comforting, uh, always there. You know, every time I would get sick or something like that, I... I would say, bring me back a pretty, and mom would always bring me back something from, from town, you know, as mm -hmm. I waited on her to get back. But it was, um, to me, life was perfect mm -hmm. at that time. How old was you <clears throat> when everything was perfect? Um, second grade, uh, from a baby, all the way up till I was about nine. Mm -hmm. And then things started shifting. Okay, what, yeah. what, what, did some abuse start happening? Yes, uh, my father had some problems. I, I, I remember conversations of my mother talking with other relatives as I would walk by and play, and they would be talking about a person that did something, but I knew it wasn't good. I could tell by the looks on their faces and, and things that were being said, it, it wasn't a good story. And so later on, um, a cousin, dear cousin of mine, came to me and said, your father has tried to do something with me. I said, what are you saying? And um, he, he tried to touch me in an inappropriate place. And I said, you're a liar. Mm, didn't want to believe that. No, I yeah. did not want to believe that. I said, you're a liar. 
you just, you know, you wanting to cause trouble. This is not real. And I hid that in my heart and I just, I just kept it there for a very long time. And so uh, how was school? School was great. Mm -hmm. I was very well loved, very well accepted, popular, uh, in the band, um, just had a normal life at school. Did this uh, uh, abuse, it sounds like sexual. It was, it was. Uh, did it, did it uh, come into your life? Yes, uh, but not in the degree like he did. Mm. Uh, children, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, but you know, later on, I suffered greatly with the spirit of lust. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, when you're a teenager, uh, you're you're kind of getting confused a little bit, aren't you? Oh yes, definitely getting getting confused. When I was 14, um, I came home with my mom, and we had this this maid that. She would take care of the house and, and clean and do the laundry and so forth. And when we came in, um, she said, Gwen, I want to talk to you. And so they had words. And she said, Debbie, you get outside and don't come in until I tell you. Mm. And I could hear her screaming from the center of the home, which is a very large home. And to hear her screaming, she was very angry. But I couldn't tell what she was saying. And the next thing I know, uh, we're moving out. We're leaving. You and your mom? Me and my mom and my brother. We're moving from Georgia to California. My life is over as the happy family, as the little princess, you know, and my brother getting everything he wanted. All that was over uh, in just a, a day. Mm. And so we... What, 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 what uh, grade... Are you in the school and all this going on? Uh, it was eighth grade, mm -hmm. eighth grade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, so when all this transition happened ever so quickly, um, he had uh, brought a young person in the home and, and the maid caught them. Mm -hmm. So it was evident that this had been going on for quite some time. So my mother, um, she presented to me that, they were going to get a divorce. Mm -hmm. So she says, but we're moving to California first. For, I remember vaguely of moving and shifting like uh, maybe 30 miles away from where I lived and hiding in hotels. And I don't know the background of the fear of that. I, I never found that out, but I just remember shifting places and, and going to different mm -hmm. places, trying to I guess she was gathering herself. So, so you get to California. Yep, get to California. New school. New school, <laughs> new people, uh, new uh, group of kids to be friends with. So how are you? How are wow. You, how are you coping with uh, this? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. So what do you turn to to help cope? Well, I turn to drugs. At, at what age? Uh, 14. Okay. Yeah. 14. So immediately when I went to California, I was not accepted because I had this long drawn out Southern draw sure. and they made fun of me. And, you know, I just, I just withered up inside and I just didn't even want to, I said, I'm not accepted here. You know, this is a bunch, I just don't like it. And so I just withdrew. Uh, and that's not normal for me because I'm very outgoing right. and loving and, right. you know, Hey, how are you? It doesn't bother me to meet a stranger. So the people that I met were already uh, in trouble, like with drugs and alcohol. So we would meet at the park and then they would, I would get introduced to dr different drugs and any, alcohol. Any boyfriends and all that? Oh yeah. Boyfriends came along, boyfriends now, left. Are you getting sexually active and all that? Uh, yes. At 14. Yes. Yes, yes I was. All right. Yes, I was. So... Here you are, you were raised in a family that uh, it, it's like uh, you have this dream family, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it's just the rug's pulled out from it's under gone. you, right? It is gone. And here you are, 14, and uh, in another state, and uh, uh, you're looking for somewhere where you fit in. Right. And the drugs and alcohol and the boys and all that. Yes, right. right. Do you graduate? Uh, <clears throat> I did. I did. 
I did graduate, but I want to back up just a moment there. Uh, my mother remarried. Okay. And so the man that she remarried, uh, he was a good guy. And they began to trust me at the age of 16. They bought me a car. And so my friend and I, we decide to go camping in Yuma, Arizona. Mm -hmm. It's like a big Woodstock type deal mm -hmm. going on down there. So she talks me into taking her and another friend down there. Well, we all go. And, uh, oh, my goodness. It was nothing but drunkenness and drugs. And I remember passing out in a sleeping bag and a motorcycle ran over me. Mm. And the next thing I know, my mother, my stepfather, and two other, another couple came to get me. Mm -hmm. And all these people gathered around and they said, you're not taking her. And, and I was begging them. I said, don't let them take me. And I had drugs in my pocket. Mm -hmm. And my mother says, do you get in this car? I said, no. I said, I'll commit suicide before. Crazy. And Crazy. I just took a handful of drugs, and she's sticking her hand in my mouth trying to get the drugs out. Mm -hmm. I'm fighting her. They finally get me in the car. And all these people are throwing sand at them, rocks at them. Mm -hmm. It was just horrible. They got out of there, and I'm in the back. And my mother, I said, I've got some more drugs that you don't know of. And I went to take those, and she fought me, and I just, like, passed out. Wow. I, I just passed out. Now, were, were, were you ever taken to church or anything in your upbringing? Yes. I had an experience with God at the age of nine. Mm. I remember at nine years old, it was quite the experience. It was a revival at this little country church. And, and who, I, who took you there? My mom. Okay. My mom. And my dad never went to church. Mm -hmm. And so when I we were in this little church and we were having revival, I remember the pastor saying, "Is and they would play that old hymnal, Just As I Am. Mm -hmm. And they were playing that. And he says, I just feel like there's one more, one more. And I had a hold of that bench. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I could feel the tug of the Lord. I said, mm -mm, I ain't going. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, he closes the service. And I just bust out crying, and I just ran up to the altar mm -hmm. and just had that time with Jesus. I believe that saved my life mm -hmm. from the time. All the way through all that mess. Yes, all the way all through that mess. I want to back up to that story where she had I had passed out in the car. I get home, and I steal her car, and I drive it back to Yuma, Arizona, and I run out of gas. And I'm hitchhiking the rest of the way. Mm -hmm. And I have on just this slinky dress. And this guy picks me up, takes me to his house. He said, I've got to stop by here first. And he said, then I'll, I'll drop you off at the park. And I said, okay. So he, we go there. He tries everything to rape me, torture me, whatever. I'm screaming. You don't want me to scream because mm -hmm. I'm very loud. Mm -hmm. And he said, oh to just take you and kill you right here. I said, go ahead. What good will it do you? You know, and I'm just talking to him like this. Mm -hmm. So he get in the car. Mm -hmm. So I get in the car. He dumps me about a mile away from the park. Mm -hmm. And so I get to the park and I'm standing over the bridge. I said, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> like, see, see, oh. the, I lived in that crazy drug world. Yes. See, I understand what you're saying. Yes. There's people listening, and they're like, how could anybody live like that? But there's other people listening yeah. that right. are in that mess. Yes. Right? Yes. And it, it, it when you're captured, you move from uh, uh, just being a partier yeah. to some drugs and... I was out of control. Out of control. Out of control. Out of control. Out right, of we'll, con co we'll come back to you. Okay. Then. Mike. Yes, sir. What kind of family was you raised in? Well, I was raised in a Christian family. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom and dad went to church all the time, and we moved up to Alaska when I was just a little baby and uh, went up there to make a new life. My father is a pioneer type of guy, so we got up there, and, and everything was normal. You know, good home, loving parents. Bunch of snow up there. Anything? Bunch of snow, cold, yes. And uh, they were loving parents, and it was great till I was seven years old. And at seven, um, 
my mom and dad separated. Mm. She went back to Oregon, and my sister and I, we stayed with my dad. Now, what did that do to you? Uh, Mama gone. You know, at the at the time, I heard I heard a little bit of the argument, and I remember Dad begging to leave my sister and I with him, and it was just a, a real empty, mm-hmm. real empty feeling. Mm-hmm. I really didn't understand. I realized now I felt deserted. Mm-hmm. At that point, it was just like part of me was missing. Sure. Then, uh, so we we stayed with him, and um, he was killed when I was nine. And so him and a boy. A logging accident? No, he was murdered. He was, uh, we were, they were on a hunting trip. Mm. And him and a 13 year old boy, uh, both he killed, the man killed them both. And would have killed me, but my dad had just got me out of the car and made me go back to my aunt and uncle's. Wow. So I missed death by about 20 minutes. Mm. This guy was a uh, military sniper out of World War II. Uh, seared conscience, you know. So mm. anyway, so at that point, that's when I became just numb, totally numb. So your mom is gone. Yes. And your dad has just been murdered. Mm. And you are how old? Nine. Nine. My God. And so, of course, mom came back up from Oregon. And uh, we lived in Alaska for two more years before we went back down to Oregon, where her family was from. Mm-hmm. Um at that point, I started drinking at 10, smoking. Drinking at 10? Yeah, and about every weekend. How'd you get it? Well, uh, in Alaska, a lot of people drank, and mm-hmm. a good friend of mine's daddy was an alcoholic. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he always had beer, and so Billy would get some, and we would go out in the woods and drink it. Okay. 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 Easy to get. And uh, so after that, we came back down to Oregon, and... Uh, Mom worked all the time. Uh, I always, I thought about the Lord a lot because I'd had some great experiences with God at the age of three. uh, In church? In church, yes. My mom said I got up by myself at two and a half years old, went down to the altar and prayed Mm -hmm. that Jesus come into my heart. Mm. At three and a half, I almost drowned. Uh, That was my first experience with God. What happened? It was the first time I ever heard his voice kind of audibly. I was running through the woods ahead of my mother and my sister that we went and visited some Mm. people. And uh, we lived on a military base. Mm -hmm. And there was a big uh, concrete dump where they would dump trash. Well, it filled up with water. Mm -hmm. And I tripped and fell in. And then you're how old? I'm three and a half years old. Okay. So three and a half, I fall in, and all I remember is hearing God's voice. It's okay. You'll be all right. There's two wooden crates in here. Put them on top of each other. Stand on it. Your head will be above water. You heard God. I heard very clear. At three and a half. Yes, sir. Wow. So I did, and I stood. And you I saw the crates? Saw the crates, and it's murky. Yeah. muddy water and I put them on I stand up and my head's right above water mm. well my sister was following me now all this happened real quick sure and she's trying to pull me out she's only two years older than me she's mm. five mm. and she drops me and I fall back in mm. and same voice same thing and I did that well by that time mom was jerking me up out of the water wow and so that was my first experience of realizing that god was real yeah so uh what was school like school was good a uh, little little school uh the uh when we went to an nl chick was one through 12 mm-hmm. and uh school was good you know, I was I had struggled a little bit because I was blind in my right eye, and and they're trying to fix it by putting a patch over. So, it, you know, that part of it, academia was pretty rough. Mm-hmm. But as far as friends and everything was good. Mm-hmm. Um, Were you going to church again in Oregon? Oh, no, we didn't. When we came back down, Mom worked two jobs trying to take care of us. I actually never saw her. Mm-hmm. Uh, so basically, I mean, once a week I might see her. So you're running the house? I'm living on my own. My sister's uh, two years older than me, so she's 13. She's trying to take care of me like she always did. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
at 12 years old, I'm going to a party, what's normal for me to do. And I started I started out on LSD before I drank or smoked pot mm. or took any other drugs. So I'm I'm taking drugs at that time. By the time twelve I'm, years old. Twelve years old. Mm. By the time I'm thirteen, I'm on about every drug you could think of. By the time before I turn fourteen, I'm shooting up crystal meth. And your mom doesn't know that? My mom has no idea. She uh would fix now she's a precious lady. Mm-hmm. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. And she did love me, but she's busy. She had my sister, my two sisters and me to take care of. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, she'd come home on a Sunday, cook dinner, and we'd visit a little bit. And that's about, I'd see her once a week. Wait, did you have any girlfriends? Uh, no, not really. I uh, I didn't go out much with girls. Mm. I didn't have time for them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I like girls. I mm-hmm. wasn't the other way. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I uh, had a lot of girlfriends. Mm-hmm. Um were you just in the party scene? I was in the party scene, now, selling what, drugs. Were you get? Party. Were you were you uh, getting angry at God or anything? No. As a matter of fact, I talked to the Lord a lot, even on drugs. Even on drugs. I understand that. Yeah. I did the same <laughs> yeah. thing. And He always talked back, mm-hmm. and uh, always comforted me. Mm-hmm. He loved me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I whenever I give my testimony, uh, we'll rock on a couple years uh, to sixteen. Mm-hmm. We, I moved to. I worked during that time because I've been on my own since I've been about fifteen. Mm-hmm. And uh, we moved to Pocatello, Idaho. Me and a couple drug buddies, mm-hmm. and uh, to find work. And I got up one morning about five o'clock to get ready to go to work, and they were all gone. Mm. They done just left me, mm. and so. My first thought, well, I just hit Chike home. I'm about uh, five or 600 miles away from home. Mm-hmm. So I get out in the freeway and I do real good till about dark. Mm-hmm. And then this man picks me up and he says, uh, now I'm 16, I'm maybe 90 pounds, 85, soaking wet, long hair, your average speed freak for the time. Mm-hmm. And uh, he said, well, if you don't get a ride before dark, you won't get one around here. And I'm thinking, well, thanks a lot, you know. Mm-hmm. So I'm walking by the underneath the bridge, and I'm scoping out a place to sleep. And, and uh, so I thought, I just stopped. I looked up towards heaven. I said, God, I know you're up there, mm-hmm. and I know you love me. Mm-hmm. And I said, I don't want to sleep in the freeway tonight. Mm-hmm. I hadn't ate food in about four days. Mm-hmm. I said, I'm cold, I'm hungry. And uh, I said, I would like for you to give me a ride, have somebody feed me, spend the night, and a ride back to the freeway in the morning. Mm-hmm. And I just said, thank you. Mm-hmm. Five minutes later, this, well, they were younger than me at my age now, but they were in their 50s. Mm-hmm. They pull over and, and they pick me up. Mm-hmm. And they said, young man, do you believe in God? Mm-hmm. All I said was yes. Mm-hmm. I didn't get into mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, I've been praying. Mm-hmm. And I said, yes, I do. And they said, well, we just got back from a prayer meeting. We've never picked up anybody in our lives. Mm-hmm. God said to pick you up, mm-hmm. take you home, feed you, and give you a ride back to the freeway. Mm-hmm. And I was just about. That's a moment. That, yeah, the moment. That was a moment. And all I could say was thank you. That's yeah. about all I could get out. So they did. They were a really sweet couple. They didn't try to push Jesus on me. Mm-hmm. Uh, they asked me if I knew about the Lord. I said yes. And and I slept on the floor that night and they fed me and took me back. Well we're gonna have to we're gonna stop right there and pick this up again tomorrow because uh you guys were full blown drug addicts. Yes, sir. Like I was, like Mom Alberta yeah. was. Yeah. And uh, that captivity is real. Yes, it is. It, it, it is a stronghold. And you just, uh, it's one thing to abuse yourself by getting high and putting all them drugs into right. your physical body. But what you do when you're high, mm-hmm. uh, all the sin involved and everything else. And uh, see, people look at you all and they see, uh, you know, success. They see a, a, a good marriage and they think well they ain't never been through nothing right you know they they, they don't understand 
But this is the power of the testimony. It is. How Jesus saves. Yes, sir. That's At the bottom of the screen, there's our helpline there. You may be watching and you are got some kind of addiction going on in your life yeah. that you need to be free from. Call that helpline. Those prayer ministers are there 24 hours a day, seven days a week to pray with you, for you, whatever it may be. Prayer starts things, prayer ends things, yes. or both, whatever it may whatever you may need, it's there for you. Uh, these ministers were raised up underneath this mantle right here. They know how to pray effectively. And you don't want to miss tomorrow because we're going to get them saved. <laughs> we're going to get them Amen. free. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 verse 4 says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Be a blessing. Power of Faith programs are available on YouTube 24-7, so you can watch from anywhere at any time. Search for Power of Faith on YouTube or go to youtube.com forward slash Power of Faith. Subscribe and click the bell to make sure you're notified whenever new episodes are posted. If you missed the episode or you just want to go back and watch it over and over again, the Power of Faith YouTube channel is there for you.